Well, hey, 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 everybody. Welcome again to The Takeover. That's right. We are back. Season five. This is episode three. I hope you enjoyed one and two so far. But as usual, I'm your host, Marcellus, and I'm sitting here with my co-host. So close. Justice. You see what I did there? Hey, wait, wait. You see what I did there? No, I didn't. Just making sure you saw. All right. Y'all know if we sitting this close, it's a reason. And so we got a special show for you today. And I'll tell you what, we're going to continue the theme from last show where we talked about who is the man. All right. We're going to continue that theme. So keep that in mind. But first, as usual, you know, our thoughts are our thoughts only. So my thoughts are my thoughts. His thoughts are his thoughts. Together, are our thoughts. They're not necessarily indicative of anybody else. Uh, not Kingdom Heaven Ministries, not Pastor Lonnie W. Brown, not Lady Francis Brown. And y'all know the reason we tell y'all that is so if we say something that you don't like, you don't go blaming them, but just let us know. It's fine. We can take it. We're grown. So if you got anything for us, any comments, leave them underneath the, uh, underneath the video. Or you can send us a message and we'll give you our email address a little later. So with that said, Justice, why don't you give them some intro thoughts from the word? Yes, the Bible. Let's do it. We're going to take it from Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And then we're going to dip, dip down into verse now chapter Chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. So let's do chapter 1 first. Uh, 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Mm. Mm. That's, that's good. Before you go to the next passage, Justice, you know what just caught me today? No. Is he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. He didn't say and after our likeness. Did you notice that? So the image of God is his likeness. And then he said, get this, he said, male and female created he them. Now he ain't formed no bodies yet at this point. So he's creating the male and female spirit. So our spirit man is the image and likeness of God. And we have to remember that as we're dealing with this, this daily life that we are little G's, God. Little G in the house, y'all. Okay. All right. Verse five. Let's just continue no, going. Chapter on. Five. Sorry. Chapter five. Yes. Chapter five, verse one and two. And it says in verse one, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man in the likeness of God, made he him male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Mm. Now, we, don't have, we don't have the time to exigently go through that but just look at that and know that God created male and female spirit and he called them both Adam which is man right so we have it's just like you, you think about it like this Justice. think about cat you got you got cat right but then you got male and female cats but they all still cats right so it's just like we're all men but we're male and female versions of that well I want everybody to think about these things i'm sure you already aware but women in the church outnumber men in general and that's true even in our ministry i think the last time i looked at our facebook numbers women um, out attended men on our facebook page 60 40. Uh, so that's kind of a lot but not only that here inside the kingdom we have pink conference for girls we got the sparkle pink club we have women in church counseling young women and praying every Saturday. Uh, we even have a toy drive sponsored by the women just so the boys wouldn't feel left out this year. Needless to say, we appear to be falling short of reaching our young men, even in this church. I'd even say the country too, if I, if I may. Some examples that you've seen recently are some of the violent fights that have broken out in schools, the school shooting and, and and you know, just a few weeks ago, we had um, 
a shooting at Oxford High School that touched, I can't tell you how many people it touched because I had two coworkers with children at that school and, and uh, I talked to one of them just recently and, and she said that the, the emotionally drained is how she would describe the feeling that they have. So these things are happening in our country. Uh, the Surgeon General recently put out a warning that mental health is uh, a factor in particularly in young people because of this pandemic. So if the Surgeon General is doing it, un making an unprecedented announcement like that, we know it's important. So uh, like Justice told you, we've looked at the importance of fathers in a young person's life uh, with Minister Brown last week and other men in that, in that young person's life. But now we're just looking at the importance of men taking the lead and doing what God has made them responsible for. So if we're gonna start doing that, cause you've heard us say male and female created he them. Let's take a look at the definition of male from a kingdom perspective. Yeah, so let's see what it means to be a kingdom male according to words in different light. So kingdom male is masculine authority licensed in earth masculine authority license in earth. And, and last week we talked about father um father being the one who was over the spiritual growth in the household well now we got masculine authority license in earth so let me read the definition to you kingdom male is the masculine expression heaven chose to place the image of god in to be responsible, there's that word again, responsible for the promotion and expansion and the advancement of the kingdom of God in earth, so all could experience the enjoyment of a kingdom lifestyle. Males are responsible for promoting the expansion and advancement of the kingdom of God, so all could and that really really spoke to me like that I, I underlined in everything so all could what happens if a man doesn't accept that responsibility how many people will be impacted mm -hmm. because it's his responsibility right so then they won't necessarily experience the enjoyment of kingdom lifestyle in the way that they should at least in the timing that they should if that male doesn't accept his role correct Mm, so that good. male not accepting that responsibility hinders someone else in that moment. Right. That's what I thought was Absolutely. like so powerful to me, you know. Right. I like the fact that you, you, you that pastor put in his, and if you don't know, Words in Different Light is available at www.itk2.com. It's a digital copy um, that's available. So if you want any of these principles, uh, feel free to go there and get it. But Pastor put in his definition what I said earlier, and I, you know, I had no idea. But God chose to place the image of God in that kingdom male, mm -hmm. and that's that's man, that's powerful, and that's a, it gives you a little sense of responsibility as a, as a male. Yes, it you does. Know, it makes you want to tighten up a little bit, <laughs> get yourself, you know, straight. But. In order for us, Justice, to get into this a little deeper, we got, we brought a special guest in today. Well, let's go ahead and introduce him, shall we? We shall. Brother Aaron Mason has graced us with some of his time today, y'all. He served uh, here at Kingdom of Heaven Ministries as an usher, and now he's a very important member of Pastor Brown's safety and security team. Um, he's also devoted many hours to maintaining the grounds of Kingdom of Heaven Ministries and helping with many mechanical repairs as well. So he's a well-rounded and a, a, a gentleman that has a... a a drive and a desire to see men do what they're supposed to do in the kingdom and step into the role that they're supposed to step in. And uh, we just want to welcome you, Brother Aaron, to the podcast. Well, I thank you for allowing me to be a part of this podcast today because it is very important for men to stand up to the role that God has given unto us. Y'all see Brother Aaron is coming in hot already. He coming in <laughs> hot on fire. But we want to ask you some specific questions because I want to get that. I want to make sure they are hearing everything you have to say, Brother Aaron. And uh, Justice, I'm going to let you start. <laughs> All right. Well, um, what, do you, what do you think the, what do you see as the main problem here with men in general? 
you know, do, do men understand their assignment and their responsibilities? And, and are they not willing to do what it takes in order to uh, fulfill that responsibility? Well, I think one of the biggest problems my young brother is being able to follow direction. See, no man wants another man telling them what to do. Mm. <laughs> See, that's a big problem. <laughs> See, and but God put gifts of grace in our life for a reason. And this just didn't start in the kingdom of heaven ministry, but it started in the kingdom of heaven when it was given assignment to men to be over everything that is, is in the earth. Men and men, let's, let me get that correct, because I don't want nobody thinking that it's men, God gave authority to man, a responsibility to keep all things in order as it is in heaven, that shall it be in earth. Now anything, you go any other way, you go any other route. You know where you're headed? You're headed for destruction. Because first of all, you must understand we were, now you said this, I'm, I'm sitting here listening, and, I'm, and I thank you for allowing me to be a part of this podcast today, but I'm sitting here listening, but you said first we were spiritual beings before we had any bodies. We were spiritual beings. So we must follow those spiritual principles in God, that God has given us if we want to have prosperity. Mm. Yes, sir. I, mm. I cannot agree with you anymore. <laughs> uh, perfectly honest, Justice, um, it was a little bit embarrassing to announce that the women had to step in this year and, and, and hold a toy jar for our young men. Now, let's, let's, let's be fair, in the men's defense, it might not have been communicated well to them that there was a need because normally we do that through the church on, on Christmas Day. But because of the way the calendar fell, um, it, it, it didn't behoove us to do that. So in, the, in defense of the men, they, there may not have been a communication there. And in addition to that, the men did agree as a, as a, as a body to help deliver those gifts to the young boys. So we, we're not coming down on the men completely. There, men, there are some men doing some some great things in our ministry and in the ministry at large, but there's a, there's a great, uh, there's a problem. There's, there are issues that need to be addressed. And that's what we want to do. We want to be honest. We want to want to have real conversation um, about real things. So uh, it makes, it makes me wonder, brother Aaron, also what other needs do you think men are not meeting for our younger uh, folks in the kingdom? Well, I believe that we have to set forth an, an example. First of all, we're going to have to come together and know that we are dependent one on another, that we need, that we need each other. You know, uh, there, there are some things that some of, the, some of my brothers know that I don't know. You know, there are some questions I know definitely that I don't know what you want to ask. But I know there are some things that, con that have some concerns to me. And we need to be able to stand up. And, and, and if we don't talk about it, if we don't sit down and we dis don't discuss what's, what's on our minds, first of all, we need to know if we are correct. Because sometimes, you know what, I'm right, in my, I mean, I'm right in everything that I say, in my own right. right. But that's not right if it's not principle-based. See, we can't, we can't come in agreement. And when we come together, we need to come into a, an agreement on what is right just, not what is right. Where are the seasoned men um, to help guide those young people? And what's keeping them from participating in church or, or being there in, in the kingdom? You know what? I really do have an answer for that. You know, first of all, if you don't, it, it, i tell you what, a pastor is a good place to start, okay? To find out where or how should you handle 
these situations because he, he's going to talk, he's not going to talk about feelings. He's going to talk about principles. See, that's what a real father does. He teaches you to be responsible in your action. And that doesn't mean that all the time that I got to be forceful. Mm. But I have to be what is considered principle based in my thinking and my feelings. Knowing that, hey, this is the way to handle this. And I love and, and I and I and I have been in a relationship and I've had children. I love them all, and I'm, I'm going to tell you I love them. I love them, and I still love them. But there, these are the kind of things that we need to be addressing. And see, you can't address it out there from home. We can't address that from communicating one to another unless we come together in the church and assemble ourselves in the presence of the Lord. There he is. Ah, Lord Jesus. Mm. You better find you better find yourself a church. So you think that goes back to what you said earlier about men not wanting men to tell them what to do, and maybe that's why they're staying away from the church? I think, I believe, I sincerely believe that that has a big part to do with it. But in order to really grow and have some spiritual growth, in order to, you know, with, 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 you know, in principles, God says, with wisdom comes understanding. <laughs> you can't get none of that mm. unless you get it from the source or somebody that can show you how to apply it properly from the source. And the source is God. Mm. Mm. Well. I guess he said that. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna say we. I'm including myself in this because I am a young man. Uh, we need men to take charge and to lead, and and I just want to um, give you the definition of what a kingdom leader is. So, kingdom leader is the living example the assignment demands to execute and regulate order. Kingdom leader is a guide who directs the course of group destiny, where while living the standards required to implement the expansion and, advance, and advancement of the kingdom of God for experiencing the enjoyment of a kingdom lifestyle. Directing the course of group destiny. Mm. You got to live, you got to live the way you tell other people to live. I can't tell you, I want you to, to live right and I ain't living right. So as a young man, I'm like, okay, how you going to tell me and you over there messing with sister so-and-so and, and, and all of this stuff was going on. Are you mess with sister so you know, <laughs> you look at me all weird. You know what? <laughs> you said something there, my young brother, but in all of that you're reading, it says, Except, exp ex an expression and advancement it's talking about the kingdom of God see you can't get that unless you're in the kingdom of God you can't I ain't gonna get that from standing at home just because I know the Bible just because I know some scriptures a bit more than you see it says what does it what, can you can you say that just one more time <laughs> so we can get an understanding of what we need to do mm. as being in a position of leadership. All right. Kingdom leader is a guide who directs the course of group destiny while living the standards required to implement the expansion and advancement of the kingdom of God and for experiencing the enjoyment of a kingdom lifestyle. You telling me you can't be an effective leader in the kingdom if you ain't in the kingdom? <laughs> That's a, you just said it. I didn't. I don't need to tell you that, <laughs> brother. You just were read it in accordance to that and to the words that were spoken out of your mouth, and it says something about the kingdom of God. So you got to put you got to put something else even above 
all, even above yourself. And that's the kingdom of God. You know what? God said, take care of my house. And I'll take care of all your needs. See, it ain't that I just need to take care of. I, 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 can't, I, can't, I just can't go to church today because I got to cut my grass. See? Uh-uh. That's not what is being said or being explained here of how to do it. You are actually speaking the words that tell us. And this is not, this is principle. This is principle. This ain't got nothing to do with what I think or what I feel. So you can apply that principle across the board, right? Anybody can. Mm -hmm. Anybody can apply that principle. And hopefully that we come together in the house of God to apply these principles and we draw other men in because they see. <laughs> God said, just try me. If you don't believe me, try me. just what, what, what did he say? He said, try me. Try me and see. That's what he said. Try Jesus, not me, though. <laughs> no, I'm saying that he says, try to work the principles and guidelines that he has set for us to keep mm -hmm. my commandments. That's what he said. Keep my statutes. Mm -hmm. Keep my laws. Keep my judgments. And your way shall be prosperous. Prosperous. Amen. And, Brother Mason, I, that, that leads me. I want to ask Justice, uh, piggybacking off um, what you said about young people and how we, those situations sometimes come about. Justice, I know you have very active male role models in the kingdom, um, not only Justice Church, but also uh, your father, your, your grandfather, who's the pastor of this church, your father being minister, um, uncles who serve, um, just a, a plethora of people. But how... How has that impacted you on having those active males in the kingdom? And how, how has that helped shape you? Boy, let me tell you something. Um, it, it is so incredibly frustrating. Everywhere you go, you're getting principled. You're getting steered <laughs> back on the right direction. You can't do no wrong. Listen, I got my grandfather, my dad, um, my Uncle Johnny, my Uncle Leroy, you, uh, Mr. Mason, I, all these men in my life who are here to help guide me and, and keep me on this right path. Mm -hmm. And so um, as a young person, it's just like, you know, I wasn't able to experience all the things that I used to want to experience. You know, I used to want to, you know, do certain things, but you know, as I'm growing up and as I'm hearing these voices of these men in my in my head, it's like, no, don't do that. Don't do this because of this, because of that. Like leadership. Uh, I can't tell you how many times my grandfather, we were driving down the street. And he was like, Justice, let me talk to you about something. I noticed that you did this to this one person in the church. Let me tell you, you can't do that. And then he would be like, look up the definition of integrity. Look up the <laughs> definition of respect. Look up the definition of, of uh, identity and, and uh, uh, all this stuff, different stuff. My dad was a little bit different. He would, he would, you know, be like, Justice, you can't do that. Here's why you can't do that. All right, good talk. We done. You know, <laughs> no principle at all. Just don't do that again. Well, it was some principles mixed in. Yeah. He didn't, yeah. he didn't tell you to go to words different life, but he did right. confuse yeah. the principles. Yeah, sure. Don't be trying to play, <laughs> Mr. Brown. I got your back, man. You my bro. But I'm just imagining in my mind, like, if, if there had been more young men that had all these male role models in their life, too, how much further along would they be? We wouldn't even have the problems that we have. If, if every young man in the world had all these male role models who didn't uh, treat me like I'm their best friend. You know? Wait a minute. Wait. See, I got a question for you. Because I know you had all these great men in your life, but I know for a fact, because you mentioned me, and I'm not perfect. <laughs> so I know that things haven't always felt perfect to you in dealing with um, the men that are in your life. So uh, were there times you felt your needs still weren't met? And how did you handle that? Were you able to talk to someone to let them know that? Or, or did you feel like you couldn't talk to them? Let's, let's be honest with us. Let's, how do you handle if you? even dealing with these godly men and you feel like have you ever felt like your needs still weren't being met 
Yeah. You know, you want to be able to do what you want to be able to do. And they're not forcing you not to do it. Sometimes you want to be told what you want to, what you want to hear, mm. you know, not necessarily what you need to hear. Okay. And so when I was growing up, I wanted to be told what I wanted to hear. You know, sometimes in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, this seemed perfectly okay for me to do. And then I'll talk to my grandfather about it. He'd be like, no, that ain't okay. So, yeah, there were times where, I mean, talking to you, I mean, I'm like, I know I'm right, Marcellus. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> but then you keep talking. And then I'll go to my papa, like, Marcellus said this. And he was like, I absolutely agree with Marcellus. I said, what is going on here? Everybody's against me. But I don't think about it. I don't think like that now. Because now I see all of you as beneficial to me in some way or another. And everybody's really for you. Right. And that's why they... Because cause I'm going to be honest, if I was against you, I wouldn't talk to you. I, I just wouldn't. I, I mean, because there's so many other things that that uh, I have to do. And I'm just, we grown men. We got, we busy. We got ho- homes. Uh, some have wives. Some, you know, jobs. Uh, other responsibilities. And, and frankly, we don't have time to deal with people that don't, that we don't, that we don't like or we don't care about. But when we care and when we love <clears throat> We're gonna spend that time, you know what I'm saying, to, 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 because God does that to us, because he loves us. Like uh, Brother Mason said earlier, thank God he wasn't so selfish and he's not so selfish uh-huh. that he just didn't spit us out. Because we deserved that a long time ago. Oh, you, and you know what? And, and to kind of reiterate what you were saying, young man, you know, the world will tell you, experience is the best teacher. No. But I'm gonna tell you, revelation, can, avo- can help you to avoid some mistakes that I have made. Come on. Now, Brother Mason, I, don't, I ain't never been shot, and I don't want to be. I don't need that experience. Right. I, I can learn from somebody else that an experience mm-hmm. I know it hurt. <laughs> I know it could potentially kill you. I don't need that experience, Brother oh, Mason. Yeah. That revelation is very clear to me. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. This is interesting because I got two perspectives here about this. When I was young, it was difficult for me to get past that feeling of embarrassment um, in church, of truly being able to praise and worship and be free. Uh, even though I knew how important it was, my, like my father's a, a minister, um, I came up just like Justice said, under great men of God. And I knew how important, my parents were unafraid to praise. We could be driving down the street and all of a sudden you'll hear, you'd be in the back seat doing nothing and you'll hear, Somebody just speaking tongues, like, wait a minute, what's going on, you know? <laughs> and uh, they, they, you know, that my, my dad is still like that. We was at a dinner recently, a uh, birthday party dinner, and uh, and he had a little, uh, we called it the butter dish message, the butter dish message, because he just, he went, I mean, he went full preacher on us mm-hmm. at the table, and it was, it was great. Everything he said was so wonderful and impactful, so I knew. But it was difficult for me to get past that and, Natural embarrassment, right? I, people, I, I always thought somebody was looking at me and was pointing and joking, look, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you put your hands up or you was crying out. Um, I'm curious, as a young person first, how's your experience in praise and worship been so far, Justice, in terms of being free to express yourself? Or have you been able to, to truly let go on a consistent basis? Um, I, before the pandemic, yeah, it was very embarrassing to to um, truly let go and show God how much I truly appreciate everything he's done for me and to worship him. Um, my Nana, actually, we talk about men, my Nana actually drilled uh, worship to me. Um, but when I was younger, I don't know if you remember this, I don't know if you remember this, but my Nana used to tell me stories about me going wild and going crazy up at the altar. And I, I'm, I can not remember any of that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I know she's telling the truth because I get little glimpses in here and there. But um, when I was standing with my grandfather and my Nana during praise and worship, it felt like um, I was one-on-one with God. And then, you know, my mom came in and... and uh, I started sitting over here to the side, and then I started noticing people looking at me. You know what I mean? It's kind of weird, but... Yeah, you thought they was looking at you, at least. Well, I know. I had this weird 
memory of me having my hands up like this and Sister Ida, you know her, right? Ina. Ina, right. Sorry, Miss Mason. Sister Ina, she looked at me, she smiled, and I was like, mm, okay. But after, during the pandemic, though, I, I really, because there's nobody here. And so you get practice. I, I used to come up here all the time uh, when nobody else was here at the church before, way early before church started, put on some music and just go around and just, you know, like I just fall out crying. So that was practice um, in the presence. Right now, uh, it's still kind of weird, but I have no problem showing people, you know, that I, I can praise and worship him because it's not about you not about you i mean you going through some stuff you're going through i'm going through some stuff i'm about to show god how much i appreciate him and i'm going to worship him for what he's going to do because he's just so good man you yeah, yeah, man you said it you said it right there <laughs> yeah. you know what you just said it, it it what you just said just impacted me um i almost i got emotional because i i thought about the fact that nobody knows what you going through except you right. and God. Nobody knows what you're going right. through except yeah, you and God. Absolutely. Nobody knows what I'm going through. So it might be a, 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 a time and a, and a particular worship song goes up and all of a sudden tears just start falling and nobody knows. They can look at you all they want to and nobody knows your battles. You know what, guys? First of all, this has been great so far. But it may, I also had another thought about when we're talking about praise and worship, it's, 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 it's a vulnerable situation, right? You're raising your hands, you're closing your eyes. We look at that, it, you're vulnerable in a way. Men don't like to be vulnerable, right? You wanna see what's yeah. going on around you. You don't like to have that situation. But that vulnerability is, it takes that to truly understand what being a man is. It takes that vulnerability. We have to allow ourselves to hurt, to cry, and to not be okay at times, in order to show young people that true masculinity is not in hiding that. See, we, see the, the, the society is attacking uh, what they're calling toxic masculinity, but not all of it is toxic. But what's toxic is when you don't show that being a man doesn't mean you don't cry. It doesn't mean you don't have feelings. It doesn't mean that you don't hurt sometimes. I remember I thought that as a youngster, I thought I couldn't cry. So when my grandmother passed, I was told, you know, make sure you, you know, be strong for your little cousins. And I thought I couldn't cry. So for a long time, I didn't cry for a year, two years, four years. And I finally, all that emotion came rushing back at once. And you imagine holding on to something inside for all those years and to have all that emotion come rushing back at you at once. And it made me, it, it, it knocked me down and knocked me on my on my behind and knocked me down to my knees like god i need help because dealing with all those emotions uh pent up like that was not the way it's supposed to be done so i had to learn that it was okay to cry it was okay to hurt it was okay to not be okay sometimes because and this is what it it goes beyond being a male see that's what that's what we initially were in the spirit but it goes beyond that we got to be men and that's really it, man. That's really what we wanted to express today, y'all. Um, so keep us lifted up in prayer, first of all. Um, Justice, myself, Brother Mason, we all got assignments here in the kingdom. We're, we understand our assignment as men, but keep us lifted up in prayer so that, so that we can continue to walk out that assignment in the way that we should. And we'll, you pray for us and we'll pray for you. Um, like, our, like our video, this is, <laughs> hey, if you can't like no other video, y'all know you like this. So hit that thumbs up. Uh, again, that tells the YouTube alg algorithm that people like it and that they should show it more and, and preview it on more pages. So hit that like button and then share it. Click that share button and you can copy the link. You can share it on your Facebook. You can share it on your Twitter. You can share it on. You can even send an email to somebody with the link. Send a text to them. Anybody, any man or any woman. Women need to understand men's to men's assignments as well so that they can understand what we're going through as well so it's not just for men uh, and then finally if you haven't subscribed you here we have 70 subscribers i think justice uh fighting to get to 100 mm -hmm. but 
go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell is right next to it and that'll let you know when a video is posted um because as you know we're going to be posting these at different times so be ye also ready and then like i said earlier if you want to reach us by all means please leave a comment under this video or you can reach us at an email at khmsocialmedia at gmail.com. Again, that's khmsocialmedia at gmail.com. But before we have our final words, Brother Aaron, just want to say thank you for your insight. Uh, thank you for your passion, your wisdom, and your words of encouragement to us and to the men at large. Is there any last thing you want to say to the people? I just want to say thank you for allowing me just to be a part of uh, this broadcast because I hope and I pray that this does reach out and touch the kingdom men and you'll see that how much you are needed and you see that you have a responsibility as I have to God for how good he has been to us. We need to come together in fellowship that we may get the answers. There's some, answer, there's some questions out there that you have. There's some questions that they have out there. Mm -hmm. But they'll never be asked unless, you, unless we come together. Amen. Brother Justice. Yeah, I'm calling you Brother Justice now because uh, <laughs> I'm taking a cue from Mrs. Mason. I know you're going to be watching this. Oh, yeah. But uh, why don't you give everybody a final word, um, as, we, as we always do. Not, a not what he did with this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I said, as we always do. <laughs> I got to put uh, the water man. Man. Yeah, but it, yeah. Amen. I, I believe they call you the bishop. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I think that's oh, your man. <laughs> but anyways, uh, let's leave on a good note coming out of first. We can't listen. We can't go nowhere without coming to the man himself, Paul. Brother Paul. Brother Paul. <laughs> Amen. So we come out of first Corinthians 547 15. through. I'm sorry. First Corinthians 15, 47 through 49. And it says in 47, Adam, the first man, was made from the dust of the earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven. Earthly people are like the earthly man, and heavenly people are like the heavenly man. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. Yes. I mean, wow. it's simple, boy, but it's deep. That's simple wow. but deep. But until that day comes where we truly become heavenly, after in this the next life, we have to mirror that heavenly nature right here on earth. Until we meet again, everybody, God bless you. We love you. Take care. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. All right.